How could the victors erase Hitler from the minds of the Germans? They began by checking out all the municipal civil servants, then dismissing 2,600 Nazi party members. The conquerors saw this denazification process as laying the groundwork for democratic renewal. The Americans set up commissions, so-called denazification courts, to decide who was and who wasn't a dedicated Nazi. Several bomb attacks were targeted on the buildings where these courts held their sessions. Hundreds of Nuremberg's organized a strike to protest a 1947 attack on the Franconian Daily Post. And then came an attack on 15,000 SS men with poisoned bread in a bakery. A group of concentration camp survivors saw this as a way to avenge the murder of millions of Jews. Former Nazi party members and others who failed to follow the rules of the occupying forces were forced to clear rubble. And the Americans kept very close watch on them. The same situation prevailed in the main building of the Palace of Justice on Fürthstrasse, where the International Military War Crimes Tribunal moved in on November 14, 1945 remaining there for 218 days and putting 24 leading members of Hitler's regime on trial. The main charges were conspiracy to disrupt peace, war crimes and crimes against humanity. The whole world closely followed the trials. Special windows were installed in the side walls for the press. Here one Russian and three American reporters on the scene in Nuremberg. The international journalists stayed at Stein Castle, an undamaged building near the city limits. The paper cutter processed countless court transcripts. While the Allies feared reprisals, the Americans held 12 further trials of 199 defendants. In April of 1949, the United States made one final appearance as prosecutor. This is the team with Brigadier General Telford Taylor second to the right in the top row. The local American military government succeeded in normalizing civilian life. 